your home or refinance your current mortgage. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250 and 685-842. Equal housing lender. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Discover a new wave of refreshment. Crafted using seltzer water, 5% alcohol, and a hint of fruit. Available in five fruit flavors, two grams of carbs, gluten-free, and 100 calories. Find it at whiteclaw.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Nothing tastes quite like it. Please drink responsibly. Hard seltzer with natural flavors. White Claw Seltzer Works, 2019 Chicago. Visit whiteclaw.com for full nutritional information. Andrew Filipponi is back on CBS Sports Radio. That's right. Erica Herskowitz standing by. She's going to tell you about maybe another pending uh, disaster in the Big 12. They've already lost Oklahoma from the ranks of the unbeaten. Uh, now Texas in some trouble at home against 0-1 TCU, who lost last week to Iowa State, an Iowa State team that lost two weeks before that to Louisiana Lafayette. So it is not going well. Uh, for that conference in the early goings here of the 2020 college football season. I noticed they did a big, they made a big deal of this today on Fox of uh, the Pac-12 rolling out its schedule. They did a schedule release thing exclusively on Fox and presented it like this was going to be, you know, a big deal. The Pac-12, oh, the, the last one, you know, I guess fashionably late to the party of college football this year and pumped out their schedule and made a big deal out of it. And because, frankly, I don't watch a lot of Pac-12 football, and I don't, not because I have an East Coast bias or because I don't want to stay up late on Saturday nights. In fact, I always stay up late. I'm not someone that goes to bed at 9 o'clock with a warm glass of milk every night. Like, I'm going to stay up and watch sports because I love it and I see no reason not to. So if there were good games, I'd stay up. But the Pac-12 just lately has not delivered good enough games to make me want to, on Saturdays this time of year, usually, uh, if there's not a great college football game I want to watch late, I'll watch a baseball playoff game or a hockey game, you know, if it's if it's the regular season. You know, typically we'd be starting the NHL's regular season right now in normal time. So the Pac-12 has really been off my radar for a long time. They make a big deal out of this thing today where they're rolling out their schedule. And I guess this detail had been lost on me. But it makes sense given how late they're starting the season in early November, a month from now. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Pirate fans, welcome to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Brought to you by U.S. Cellular. Be sure to visit one of ECU graduate Brandon Tate's Platinum Certified U.S. Cellular stores and experience the highest standard of customer service. Call in on the live line at 317-1250. Now, with a complete recap of the game and your phone calls, live from the Pirate Radio Studios, here's your host of the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter, Clip Brock. 317-1250, 317-1250, the number on the fixed NC live line as ECU goes down to Atlanta. And they go down hard to Georgia State today. 49-29, to the final score. ECU scores first, just as they did a week ago. And then Georgia State dominates the game, a game where ECU does not score an offensive touchdown. They got a touchdown from the defense on the first play of the game from Warren Saba. They got a couple of special team scores in the fourth quarter, and that's it as far as touchdowns go. A very disappointing Saturday in Atlanta for the Pirates. We're talking about it here on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show. 317-1250. We have a couple open lines. 317-1250. We're back with your calls after this. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak fair. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. 
Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Chico's Mexican Restaurant is the home of the best margaritas. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Tuesday for the Gulp of Mexico, a huge 46-ounce lime margarita for only $6.99. On Thursdays, relax and enjoy half-priced pitchers of Chico's house margaritas. Choose from lime, strawberry, blood orange, raspberry, or peach. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. How much does the word reliable mean? Sure, all businesses describe themselves as reliable, and we certainly wouldn't expect any business to be unreliable, but when you take a word like reliable and make it your way of life, the entire core of your business, it tends to mean a little more, and it's something you have to show people, not tell them. At Delcor, we show it by being there the same day you call. We show it by simply doing outstanding work with exceptional products, a family-oriented work ethic, and genuine caring for all of our neighbors throughout Eastern NC because in a time of need we know the first and the only thing you need is someone you can count on that's why we only use equipment you can count on too like a train comfort system it's hard to stop a train Delcor can have a new train comfort system installed in no time or we can provide an AC tune up to make sure your system is performing well so will your system keep you cool all summer find out call us we're Delcor the service professionals reliable for over four decades visit DelcorInc.com today Wouldn't it be great if you could get auto, home, life, and business insurance all from one agency? Well, that's where the Gavigan Agency comes in. They can help protect what is important to you. So why not simplify your life? See the Gavigan Agency in Greenville or give them a call today at 252-756-1400. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. Hey, Pirate fans, the Papa John's menu has grown again with the all-new grilled buffalo chicken papadilla. The papadillas are part sandwich, part pizza, and are only $6. Choose from the all-new grilled buffalo chicken, Philly cheesesteak, Italian, pepperoni meatball, and barbecue chicken and bacon, all for only $6 each. Also, for a limited time, get any large five-topping pizza for only $13.99. Place your order today online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. This is Brian Bailey, host of the Brian Bailey Show, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular Fifth Quarter Postgame Call In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317 1250, the number on the fixed NC live line as we wrap up. A 49 to 29 ECU loss to Georgia State. And it was ugly. It wasn't even as close as the final score indicated today in Atlanta. We'll, we will take your thoughts on the fixed NC live line. A couple of open lines. We got Kenny in Atlanta. We'll start uh, with Cameron in Greenville. Hey, Cameron. Hey, Clip. Um, embarrassing, you know. It's really hard to I, – I could say a lot of things. I could say a lot of things. But it, what really speaks for itself is the fact that the offense did, wasn't able to score a single touchdown against a Sun Belt team. Um, I, I would say that they're above average Sun Belt team, but they're still a Sun Belt team. And that's that's a huge problem. It feels like it's every year it's the same problem. Our, our fronts on the defensive line and offensive line just are unable to compete. And, I mean, I get it. I understand, you know, because of COVID – uh, because of the COVID test on the offensive line, because of the lack of workouts that we've been able to have as a team and offensive line together, um, strength and conditioning-wise, because of the virus, you know, it puts us at a significant disadvantage. But 
that offensive line, guys, that is not a Division One Group of Five offensive line. They've got a ton of work to do. I don't know if it's the players. I know a lot of it's because of the lack of practice time, because of COVID-19, lack of strength and conditioning just sets us at a disadvantage. But there's there's no way we win a game with the offensive line we currently have have right now. And um, it's really hard to get positive out of the game. Special teams is only positive, and I feel like special teams has been a positive for the past few years. But, I mean, Cliff, not being able to score a single offensive touchdown against a Sunbelt team, that's absolutely brutal. And Holt Naylor's was pressured every single time he got back. I started to feel bad for him. But Tom Brady was quarterback, same thing. You just can't. With that offensive line, you're not going to be able to do it. And I could say a lot more. I'm just not going to waste your time and say anything else. So um, just keep in mind, guys, we got a lot of young guys on the team that have to grow and mature. I still believe Mike Houston's the guy to get it done. Little suspected calls by Donnie and Patrick today, but I'm not going to say anything else. I want to end on a question with, for you, Clip, and for the rest of Pirate Nation. Um, my question is this: Would you rather watch ECU get pummeled every game in the American Athletic Conference, or would you rather watch ECU football win at least six to ten games every year in the Conference USA? That's the end of my <laughs> thought. As always, go, go Pirates! All right, there's Cameron in Greenville. I mean, if if that was the bare bones question, I will take the one with ECU winning. However, a, a lot comes with that. You know, you get more money in, in the, the American, and if you're saying you guarantee to get pummeled every week or win games, obviously I would take the winning games. Um, I, I I don't think we're forever going to be pummeled in the AAC. When we started in the American, uh, we played good competitive football, but we see where we are now. We are, with UConn out, we are the bottom feeders uh, of the American in football. Uh, I don't think you can deny that. All right, uh, Bryce, hang on. We'll go to Kenny down in Atlanta. Hey, Kenny. Hey, guys. Uh, well, we'll do the old cliche, the good, the bad, the ugly. Well, we'll start off with the good. Pirate Nation showed out today, guys. I mean, uh, we, we had more fans than they did. And uh, the stadium, uh, stadium looked good in purple. Nice stadium. All right, now we get to the bad. Uh, play calling, execution, fundamentals, blocking. It, it couldn't run the ball. It was, it was very embarrassing. You know, and last, uh, really the ugly was the fans from East Carolina in the stands turning on each other over the quarterback. Don't understand it. If anybody watched the game, Holton was under pressure nonstop. He, he didn't have a chance to throw the ball. And there at the end of the game, when we actually made a little bit of comeback, they didn't have CJ in the game. Don't understand that either. But, you know, we've complained for a long time since we got rid of Russ. We, we blamed everything on Mo, which he was horrible. It's time to quit blaming Mo. Houston, we got a problem. And we need to fix it. We cannot get our butts, and I'm being nice, butts handed to us like we did today by a Sunbelt team. No excuses. Get better. Play better. And we will support you. Go Pirates. Pirate Radio, we love you. Support you. But, man, that that, that was embarrassing down here. And uh, just I don't know what else to say. All right, Kenny. Well, thanks for your call. Uh, A lot of points to hit on there. CJ not in the game. I saw at the very end of the game before Mike Houston went to go shake hands with Sean Elliott. He was talking on the sidelines one-on-one with C.J. Johnson, and I'm not going to speculate what it's about, but clearly uh, there, there's some sort of disconnect there if your you know, most explosive offensive weapon isn't out on the field while there's still time on the clock. So maybe we'll get some answers on that uh, this week. 317-1250, Kenny gone. So Bryce is up next in Buxton, North Carolina. Hey, Bryce. Hey, fellas. And actually, this was not the birthday present I was hoping for today, but uh, here we are. <laughs> um, sad birthday? What's the opposite of happy birthday? Uh, well, uh, that's the uh, uh, the clip with too many beers and all three of a sports team losing in one day birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's it. You're hitting too close to home right now, uh, Bryce. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, I'm actually call, I'm a little whispered right now because I'm calling you from set. So, uh, at Buxton is is an awesome little place here today. Rolling cameras, but I've been sneaking up. Uh, I got the Wi-Fi here, so I'm able to sneak some of the game. Uh, you know, I mean, you have the O line play. What do you do? I mean, you, you, you make them hit the squat rack more. You know, and I I, I don't know. Uh, poor 
Holton and those guys can't get into a groove, you know, because he's just getting smacked in the mouth. Um, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's, and uh, there's some tough matchups there, you know, they, that big wide receiver they have there is, uh, is, real, is real rough. And I think he's like 6'3", and going against somebody who's 5'9", I mean, that's a, you know, they take advantage of it, and everybody will do that. So, you know, I mean, I, I just hope that they can get in this groove and everything keeps, you know, you know, going and we can get in the stretch and then get on a tear. But I don't know, you know, it's just, uh, I, 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 I always thought, it's funny, I've always said that Georgia State should be the people to uh, replace UConn. Um, great recruiting base, and I think the people who beat App State last year, um, a lot of people disagree with me, but I think they showed their worth today. All right, quiet on the set, Bryce. This is very awkward hearing you. You're usually the loudest caller, and now you're the quietest caller. It's very strange. <laughs> Producer Bryce here. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, yeah the professional Bryce. Well, Bryce, uh, I, I was kind of worried during the game that, and I just hope uh, people haven't given up completely. Uh, I like that people are still mad, sad, upset about it, and still care about it. And you, you know this, man. We've talked about it over the years. Like apathy is the absolute worst worst part of it. So. I'm glad that uh, you still care. It still hurts when they lose, and uh, we're gonna kind of we're gonna hang in together and hopefully see this thing turn around together. Great, I'll be there for every one of them. Yeah, the I know you will. Thanks, Bryce. There's Bryce uh, from Hollywood via Greenville, Buxton, Outer Banks, whatever. All right, three one seven twelve fifty. Let's go to Cayman in Greenville next. Hello, Cayman. Cayman. All right, let's try one more before we take a timeout. Let's go to Rodney in Winterville. Hey, Rodney. Yeah, how are you doing today? All right, man. How are you? Yeah, I called in last week, and I made the statement where I said I was going to wait until to see us play a team closer to our level before making any type of uh, evaluation of the program. I've been a part of that for a long time. I still say um, when we were taking non-qualifiers when we were in Conference USA, that made the difference because we were getting kids who couldn't maybe go to a power five school who were coming here to play ball, and that made us more competitive when we played the, the, the ACC, the old Big East school, you know, things of that nature. Um, we're still having problems blocking. We're still having problems stopping the pass, stopping the run. We still, have a, we still have a lot of issues. I'm still here with the Pirates. But the thing that I see is the players that we are bringing in are not just as good as, people we're playing. I think the Sun Belt may be getting better players. If you look at the Sun Belt over the first few weeks of the season, they were looking sharp. They upset a few teams in the Big 8, I mean the Big 12, um, in, in um, I think it was Kansas State and Iowa State who lost. Um, but I, I really don't know what the problem is right now. Uh, is it the recruits that we're getting? I mean, we, we, we went through Mo, now we're with Houston in his second season. I'm still on this. I'm still on this boat. I'm still on this ship. I'm not going to give up on it. But that's my question: is is what do you think is our problem? Is it coaching, or is it the players that we're getting, or are the players hungry enough to really go out here week in and week out to put in the work to be that competitive pirate squad that we that we've been used to in the past? That's my question: Is the desire really there with these players? If not, we we're recruiting players from out of Eastern North Carolina, the Morris Foremans, uh, Terrence Coppers. Those types of even go, go back as far as the Reed brothers from Farmville and other places. We were competitive. We worked hard. We played hard. Uh, is, is that a problem that we're having? That's just my question. Yeah, well, uh, Rodney, thanks for the call. I mean, we got plenty of talent from Eastern North Carolina around here. I don't think that the lack of that is an issue. But, I mean, you look, the, the biggest, if you could change one position group on the team and elevate it right away, what would you folks choose? I mean, I would choose offensive line, and I think a lot of your issues would be cleared up. And we have been outmanned on the offensive line for two straight weeks. It's a lot more understandable and acceptable when UCF outmans you on the offensive line uh, and defensive lines. But when Georgia State does it, that's when you, you start to scratch your head a little bit and say, why? And why don't we have that here? And I feel like the recruiting on the defensive line, the last couple of recruiting cycles, uh, recruiting years, has been solid. And we're going to have some studs there on that side of the ball in a year or two. The O-line, I'm not sure. And they're the, that's probably the toughest thing to find, too. That's what coaches will tell you. But that's where we are severely lacking right now. 
uh, when it comes to the offense and, and really when it comes to the whole team. All right, Sean and Mason, hang on. We'll get to you after we take a timeout, 317-1250. Thanks to Parker's Barbecue for the awesome pregame food and postgame munchies as well. Uh, they hooked us up with some chicken, barbecue, some shrimp burgers as well, all the great sides. Parker's Barbecue, three locations in Greenville to serve you. Order some and watch some of the good football uh, that's on right now. Unfortunately, we didn't see much good football out of the Pirates today, especially on the offensive side. Texas A&M and Alabama scoreless with 12 minutes left to go in the first quarter. A lot of good games on. We'll be talking about those and taking your calls here on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. We're back after this. Great food, great atmosphere, and great service is Atavola Market Cafe. Atavola is simply a restaurant that focuses on that, being a great restaurant. There's something for everyone at Atavola. The menu offers a variety of great choices like pastas, pizzas, sandwiches, soups, salads, and seasonal rotating selections. Lunch or dinner, Atavola is always the right call. Call ahead and get Atavola to go. Or stop by the bar for a drink with friends. It's simple. Come and eat at Atavola Market Cafe, Red Banks Road next to Food Lion, and AtavolaMarket.com. Atavola, pirates supporting pirates. Hey guys, do you not look your best? Do your hair and nails need some work? When is the last time you looked at your feet? Guys, I can assure you that the ladies love a nicely groomed man. I'm Amanda and I have the solution. The Man Cave is now open, offering salon services for men only. Men, come enjoy the complimentary lounge before or after your service with free food, drinks, and pool table. The Man Cave, now open on the corner of Fire Tower and Evans, Greenville. Your CBD store in Greenville has the highest quality CBD products in the country. Your CBD store is the first and only brand that carries USDA certified organic products such as gummies, honey sticks, and high absorption water soluble liquids which are all made in the United States. They even offer products for your pet. The educated staff will help you answer any questions and you can stop in anytime to get a free sample. Your CBD store, locally owned and operated, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 6 right beside Duck Donuts in Greenville. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is former ECU tight end Bryce Williams from my friends at the Auto Store Group. If you're in the market for a quality used vehicle, then the Auto Store Group is for you. The Auto Store Group has three locations and over 150 quality used vehicles to choose from for all budgets. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. The Auto Store Group, your hometown store and pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Go Pirates! Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice baker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke, everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. What's the big deal, deal? Where can you get pizza, bread twists, specialty chicken, and more for just five ninety nine each? Is it at Domino's? He hands off hand toss pizza and a marble cookie brownie. He's going, going, going! There's a lot of variety on the radio and at Domino's too, where you can mix and match two or more. Five ninety nine each at Domino's. Two item minimum pan pizza bone and wings and bread bowls will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with Copy, Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. Pirate Radio! Pirate Radio. Pirate Radio. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250 is the number on the Fixed NC Live line, and we've got calls locked and loaded right now. All four lines are full. We'll take your calls until the last caller is served here on the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show. 
Coach Rick Smith joining us now inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Uh, Coach, that was a, an ugly one, a tough one to watch today. Yeah, that's why it took me so long to get here. I was crying. Well, <laughs> dry those tears, and uh, folks will have some questions for you to answer, and we'll get your take on what happened along the way. Uh, but let's get back to the callers. Chris, Ford, and Mason, hang on. Let's go to Sean in Washington, D.C. Hey, Sean. Hey, Cliff. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I, I think I'm just going to echo what's been said. Uh, first start with the, with the O-line. This is going on for at least five years now, and and the line that was out there today really um, did not look like they even belonged on the same field uh, as the defensive line of Georgia State. And the Georgia State offensive line uh, was much better than our line, both in technique and, and in the power game. And that's what Houston wants to run here. He wants to have his front five dominate their front front five and and that's why he keeps sticking with the run game and i i think what he's trying to do is give confidence to those guys up front but when they look at the tape this week it's going to be it's going to be ugly um there were so many times when their three position their three technique their their end simply did one step shift and went right by our offensive line players and it almost seems to me, too, that what I'm concerned about now is, is the program. Um, you know, there was that one moment when I think it was maybe the third quarter where Holton goes down. He takes a really vicious shot, and it's because of, uh, it's because of the line, and, and nobody helps him up. And, and their attitude just seems to be something that, as Pirate fans, we're not used to seeing. Um, I mean, to not help your quarterback up after it's really your fault for allowing him to get sacked. Um, they seem to play with their heads down, um, and they, they seem pretty deflated. So that, that's a culture problem to me. And uh, I think for all of us who, who've grown up watching Pirate football, um, the culture issue to me is problematic because five years of losing now, and this could be our sixth year of losing, you know, these players, every player in this system now, um, has has not really been part of a winning team, and all they've known at East Carolina culture is is losing, and it really does take often, you know, to to be able to win, and um, it, it takes an attitude, and we don't have that attitude right now, um, you know, from it, it looks like there are some issues with uh, with CJ on the outside. I, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm sure the coaching staff does. So. Um, there are so many areas of, of problems, and um, I just, I, going forward, I think that we're really at a crossroads. Um, and whether or not this program can really turn it around, I, I think uh, it's make or break for Houston, because if Houston can't turn this around, I, I don't know who can. Um, you know, everywhere he's been, he's won. And so for him to struggle here has also got to be frustrating. I mean, you would have hoped, or I would have hoped, that we would have seen some improvement from the end of last year into Houston's second year. This is the second year in the system for these guys. It's the second year in the system for, uh, for Donnie. And it looks like they're just starting. And, and, you know, it's, it's amazing to me how lost they look. Everyone looks lost, and I, and I know we can blame this on COVID, but every other team has had to deal with COVID. So we look lost. We look like we look like we're being um, out physical. We don't look like we even want to be out there, and we don't know how to win. And for the program, th- this is bad news. And um, I, I really hope Houston can turn it around. But this is a much bigger project than than I would have thought. Um, and so I, I hope he can stick it out because uh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. I, I wish I had something positive to say, but I don't. I don't. All right, Sean. Okay. Well, yeah, That's all I got. Appreciate it. Thanks for the call. And, uh, Coach Smith, you hit on this last time you were on Pirate Radio Live on Friday, the, that, that you were there for a year uh, with the previous coach, and you knew you know how bad it was, and you also – Kind of gave us some bad news on Friday that this is not a one or two year fix. What'd you say? Three to four? You know. Well, uh, there's an old saying: winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. So uh, we don't know how to win right now. 
And when when something goes bad, I think our kids drop their head and they start saying the same old stuff, you know. But you know, we the last year rough was here. I believe that was a losing season. Five uh, and seven. Yeah. Montgomery, you know, three terrible seasons, and then last year we won four. Uh, so you've had like some of the callers have said, you know, we've had five years of losing. Uh, it's tough to overcome that, and I'm shocked. I was very uh, frustrated to watch what I watched today. Uh, I am a coach of 49 years, and uh, I hate to, to second-guess coaches or criticize coaches, uh, but today was ugly. <laughs> very, very ugly. Uh, uh, but but I am very honest, too. And, yeah. And, uh, well, we all saw it. I mean, it's hard to sugarcoat that, right? Uh, something's not, something's not right somewhere. Yeah. Three one seven twelve fifty. Mason's up next in Greenville. Hey, Mason. How you doing? Good. Um. Well, I don't have too much to say. Um. I think, you know, we could have played a lot better. I'm just gonna go ahead and say what everyone's thinking. We really aren't that good. We got a lot to work on, offensive line. I mean, that ain't that's not a D one line. I mean, we got to learn to work on that. Kind of, kind of embarrassed about the loss today. We should have had this game easy. It should have at least been closer, a one possession game. Uh, I mean, you know, I could have slept in today and got some more sleep, but I. I just I thought I'd watch the game and second half was a lot better than the first half. First half I about turned the game off. It was pretty bad, but you know I think I got a lot of trust in Houston. I think he's going to take the season far a lot better. He's going to make the team straight. And yeah, that's about all I got to say. Well, it was nice talking to y'all. All right, Mason. Well, uh, you can sleep in next week, seven o'clock kickoff, so you won't have to worry about getting up uh, for the game. But uh, and I'm in that same boat. I'll, I'm gonna sleep in next Saturday myself. So will Shirley, I'm sure. Uh, after a couple of eight o'clockers on the pregame show, a uh, lot of issues. Coach, a former player on the team just messaged me and said our starting right offensive tackle is 257 pounds. Enough said. Um, the O line certainly has been an issue through two games, and kind of expected it against UC. And, but they were outmanned today against Georgia State. This summer, uh, one of the coaches on the staff told me that he was very concerned about the offensive line. Uh, offensive linemen uh, are the very hardest to find, to sign. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it's just tough to find them. And you know we don't have very many to start with and uh, it's just gonna take a while and we got one of the best guys you can find to teach him in steve shankweiler but he can't he's it not a magician right? i can assure you it isn't coaching and i yeah. know some people you know gonna sit out there and say i'm crazy but i've worked uh i've been on eight staffs in my life and i'll put steve shankweiler up beside any damn offensive line coach i've ever worked with yeah 317-1250 let's go back down to atlanta and talk to ford hey ford hey guys how you doing bro? all right yeah thanks for having me on uh, we were actually just watching the game live and it just left to the very end but ultimately i mean we all know the offensive line issues being a little bit smaller in terms of our line itself and having the belt bed up but even like you guys were saying putting our heads down and being on our heels i mean watching it live right in front you could see as soon as things started to go wrong you know we were on our heels and even holding was pushing and a lot of the passes that were off and you know in terms of the offensive line play it wasn't great but we were pushing and forcing things overall in terms of the offense and even a little bit on the defense and you could just see that we were overall on our heels i think that just comes down to you know, a lot with the attitude of the players and getting in this new regime. I mean, from firsthand on the field, I don't know as much of, you know, the co a coaching issue. I think Mike Houston's an incredible coach, but, you know, ultimately you can just see ultimately right, you know, in front of you that as soon as something goes wrong right now, we get on our heels, we push, and we start to come back, and then things go haywire. 
and our offensive line just has major, you know, height and length issues in terms of our size, but ultimately the stuff could be improved on. So, you know, that's just kind of first-hand thoughts on looking straight at the game, watching live. I know I keep hearing a lot of this about the offensive line, but uh, guys, second series, our defense, five plays, 75-yard touchdown. The second series, two plays, 60-yard touchdown. The fourth series, 10 plays, 63 yards touchdown. The sixth series, nine plays, 75 yards touchdown. The eighth play of the game, eighth series of the game, five plays, 76 yards. That ain't got anything to do with the other line. You're right about that. I was thinking about it during the game, though, Coach. Like, it, what what would I fix first? I think my answer would still be the offensive line, but that's because the defense did play well in the second half. But then again, you give up 35 at halftime, it's tough to play catch-up at that point. So yeah. there's issues at a lot of places. There, yeah, I mean, we're we talking about the offensive line, but my God, man. Yeah. I mean, then you go second half, you know, we did a little bit better. But yeah. don't blame it all on the offensive line. I'd blame it on the team. Three one seven twelve fifty. Let's go to Chris in Atlanta. Hey Chris. Hey, how are you guys doing this afternoon? Doing good. How are you? Uh, I can't can't complain. Uh, as everybody else, I'm disappointed, but I I don't want to be negative on this on this call in. I I want to give some positive. Uh, first positives. First time I've seen the Pirates play in two years. So nice having them in and my part of the country. Uh, second positive, uh, I really like seeing a lot of purple and, and gold over there. Uh, with the circumstances with COVID, I really thought that we, we had a lot of fans show up. So that part I liked. And then uh, uh, at the end, uh, some of the special teams plays, I really thought they'd make it interesting. Uh, got a little bit of dis- disappointment there, but I still love seeing, uh, seeing a few special teams plays. I thought that went, went well. Uh, but for me, I was excited to see the Pirates play in two years. Uh, now, I'm heading to Talladega tomorrow. Hopefully, Kirk Bush will make it a lot better and win two in a row. That's all <laughs> I've got, guys. Great sports weekend for Chris. The game didn't go the way he wanted it to today, but got to see a live football game and headed to Talladega tomorrow. And I meant to say it early, earlier, but Kenny, Ford, and Chris, uh, awesome uh, of you guys for going down there and checking out the Pirates live. Uh, it's, it's great that uh, that the Pirates still have fans that will go see them no matter where they are. And uh, from what I understand, a uh, pretty decent amount of purple and gold in the stands today at the old Turner Field. All right, let's go next to Reed in Greenville. Hey, Reed. Cliff, Coach, afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Oh, Reed, was hoping you would crack a few in celebration, but it's not going to be today. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't have but one to crack, and and that's going to be to the uh, to the special teams. I mean, we could, like Coach mentioned a, a few callers ago, it's more than just the offensive line and bitching about the line this and line that. It's like beating a horse with a dead horse with another dead horse. What are we going to do about it? You know, talk to you blue in the face, but so. Now, Coach, a preface to this, I used to do this to you and your defense a lot. You can ask Clip and the boys when y'all would put up some fine games, and I'd open for you. So here it is. What is this? 2020, first time for our kickers, our special teams guys. Cheers, brothers. It's a nice That's about all i got to say about that. It's a good sounding crack right there, Reed. Good stuff. All right, Reed in Greenville. He uh, used to do the celebratory beer cracks in the phone there, Coach, and not many you could do today, but special. <laughs> heck, without the special teams, this game's a lot worse than the outcome is. Yeah. In fact, uh, they would only put up seven points without Verity, the block punt, and uh, and the Sneed touchdown. All right, let's uh, get one more before we take a timeout. Back down to Atlanta. we got a lot of folks listening to us, uh, either tuned in on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, or PR927FM.com. Thanks to everybody for tuning in, and that includes Ryan in Atlanta. Hey, Ryan. Hey, how you doing, fellas? Uh, uh, I just want to have y'all speak on Holton's performance, and how do you feel about Garcia's last two snaps? Well, first of all, I, I, I'm not going to read much from Garcia's snaps. He had a nice run for a first down and then a couple of incomplete passes. Hold Naylor's obviously uh, not good. And, I mean, the numbers show it today with the interceptions. And I was asked during the game, you know, do you get Mason Garcia in there? 
uh, Coach and I said last week we would like to see him play a series with the young offensive line, and I'm going to give this over to Coach Smith in a moment because he's a coach and I'm just a guy that watches football. But with a young O-line, I, I don't know if you want to shake his confidence, maybe get him hit a few times and injured. I don't know what the, the deal is there, so I'll throw it over to you, Coach. Uh, Garcia did get in for three snaps at the end. That was it. Uh, but but what do you think of Aylers, and what do you think moving forward, maybe giving the kid a shot? Well, I, I definitely I would – as we talked about last week, I think you got to always have a backup quarterback ready to go. I mean, you just don't know what's going to happen to your starter. And I'd rather get him. Whether you're way ahead at the end of the game or way behind, put that second team guy in there and get him some reps. So if you ever need him, I mean, he's had a few reps. Because, I mean, you're going to play a lot better if you've played 20 or 30 reps versus playing two. And that's just my opinion. I don't understand why we didn't play him some last year at the end of the season. Well, uh, Garcia's, Garcia's the, true freshman, the true freshman, and then you have uh, Flynn, too. Flynn. Yeah. But, you know, the coaches make those decisions, and, uh, you know, but – I'm a fan now, so I can second guess the coach. Yeah, you can say whatever you want now. Uh, and look, Aylers, it's not all on Holden Aylers, but again, you know, 242 today, three interceptions, no touchdowns. And the passing game, again, as a whole, just not clicking at all. And, and C.J. Johnson has been invisible this year. Uh, one catch, no yards today for right. ECU. Two targets last week. Yeah. Just not nothing. Just just yeah. not involved at all in the game. All right, uh, let's uh, take a timeout, Shirley. All right, we'll come back. We got Davis, who's on the way home from Atlanta, and Zach in Surf City on the line, and that means we have two open lines. Three one seven twelve fifty. You can jump in now on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show, and we'll have more for you right after this. At Tiebreakers, we pride ourselves on serving big, big juicy wings. wings. I'm talking big and juicy. Our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens' faces. If our chickens played football, they'd be linebackers. The competition's chickens, they'd be skinny little kickers. Trade those kickers in for linebackers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. Hey Pirate fans, this is head coach Mike Houston. The physicians at Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center have been taking care of our athletes here at East Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or if it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care, physical therapy, and diagnostic testing. For experienced and professional services, call the folks who have been taking care of me and many of our fans in Pirate Nation or visit them online at orthopedicseast.com. Go Pirates! Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown & Wood Cadillac. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal, to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown & Wood, get an all-new 2020 Cadillac Escalade and save over $13,000 off. As always, Brown & Wood is the home of the lifetime warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. With rates being historically low, now is the best time to buy or refinance your home. This is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. In MLS, 1719-250 and 685 for two. Equal housing lender. Ahoy, mateys! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirate's Cove Fast Pass. The new Pirate's Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in New Bern is now open. Pirate's Cove is now offering Fast Passes for $9.99 for new Fast Pass customers. These Fast Passes are good in New Bern and at all three Greenville locations. Visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East 10th Street. And now in New Bern on Glen Burnie Road. So we have you surrounded. Pirates Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. 
If you're like many, you may have put on the Corona 5, 10, or even 15 over the last two months. Well, the weather is warm and it's time to get that body back on track. At Clean Eats, we have you covered. Our weekly meal plan will quickly help you get back to where you want to be. Order online at cleaneats.com. Our cafe is back open, sanitized, and waiting to serve you healthy lunch and dinner options for dine-in, takeout, curbside, or even delivered through our delivery partners. Clean Eats, it's a lifestyle. 805 Red Banks Road, Arlington Village. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. This is ECU assistant football coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to the U.S. Cellular fifth quarter postgame call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250, the number on the fixed NC live line, and we have been locked and loaded since the beginning of today's program. Rick Smith alongside Clip Rock here, Shirley Rhodes taking your calls, and Chandler Honeycutt handling the video production, Glenn Griffin handling the Mike Houston Zoom right now, so we'll have that for you. Uh, some comments from Holden Aylers and others as well on our social media sites that you can check out. So everybody running at full steam here inside the Pirate Radio Studios. All right, Tom, Bobby, Zach, hang on. Let's go to Davis on the way home from Atlanta. Hey, Davis. What's going on, Clip? Hey, man. What's up? Um, we all know Holton had a rough game, but at what point do you go away from running the ball up the middle, first, second down, over and over again, and not change it up going outside or just change up the play call completely? I think Kirkpatrick did not have a good game calling calling plays today. We were at the game, and it just seemed like we were doing the same thing that wasn't working over and over again. So yeah, I just want to get your opinion on that, and go Dinos. All right, there's Davis on the way home from Atlanta. Uh, Coach, we saw a lot of screen passes. We saw a lot of runs up the middle. Are those things you do when you're you're kind of worried about protecting your quarterback? I mean, is that why they, they ran on first and second down so much today? Well, a lot of the short passes are for that reason. You know, the flares, the screens. Uh, again, I hate to second-guess the coaches, but uh, now he tried to throw some deep balls. Yeah. And uh, – but you know he was he was scrambling around quite a bit today, and uh, you know we have some some issues on the offensive line, which I know they're going to work on. Uh, you know, and, and like I hadn't, I don't know if I've said this today or not, but uh, winning is a habit. She said it, and guess what else is? Unfortunately, <laughs> so is losing. That's right. And we've had five of those. I think sometimes the way we started, the kids, the kids may have came out the second half a little bit flat and uh, just couldn't get it going. Three one seven twelve fifty. Zach's up next in Surf City. Hey Zach. Hey Clip. Uh, well, you can't win them all, but you sure can lose them all. Um, one thing I want to know is when is the last time, one, that we scored a touchdown on a field goal unit, punt unit, and defensive unit in the same game? But also, when is the last time that that happened in the entire NCAA and the team lost? I'd really <laughs> like to know that. I know you're on top of your game. But, um, you know, uh, those are some positives. But at the same time, man, we look abysmal. And I'm sorry, you know, I, I know we're all huge fans of Holton and we want to see him do great, but um, he, he just looked uncomfortable throwing the ball. And, you know, at some point, and I know it's two games into the season, but, um, you know, you got to see what this Garcia guy is, is all about. Um, and I, I think that as the season progresses, at what point do you say, um, you know, hey, I'd rather lose – you know, with a freshman than, you know, upperclassmen. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I've coached before, and, you know, you, you want to see your younger players start playing and, and fill all that uh, for the future. And, you know, I think as a coach, correct me if I'm wrong, coach, but you wanna, you'd want you rather lose with freshmen than, than upperclassmen. Am I right? Thank you, yeah. guys. Yeah, you'd rather lose with the young kids. But, uh, you know, you, you 
you've had these kids in your program and you got to do them right so if a, if a senior's working his butt off and he's doing everything he can to help you win i wouldn't bench him early in the season now i i remember one i can't remember which head coach it was where i was at but we were you know we were not doing well and uh with about three games to go the head coach in a team meeting told the older kids uh guys uh we're having a losing season we're not doing well i just want you to know that uh i'm gonna start playing the younger guys and i hope that you'll support those kids and uh help us build this program for the future and again and I, we're only in week two right now yeah. and that's something maybe yeah, think, moving yeah. forward you, you, you know about. if if we're still if this is still happening in the you know the seventh right week of the season yes and i think the older kids the seniors would understand that and zach good point i wish i'd have thought of Very it if, good point. if i told you yesterday uh rick that we would score on a uh, punt block on a fake on a field goal and also a pick six score touchdowns you just said we'd have won by what 35 40 yeah. points yeah I, I mean you don't get all those and lose the game often that it's uh i thought the game would be close uh yeah. i didn't tell anybody outside my home what i thought but i told my my daughter asked me what i thought and my wife i said i think we'll win by one to three points i thought it would be close yeah uh, I had no idea it would be like it was today. I think you and a whole lot of people, Coach. All right, 317-1250. Let's go down to Florida and talk to Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Uh, rough rough day for the Pirates. Uh, I know we're all suffering, but I do want to say a shout-out to Pirate Radio uh, for all you guys do. Um, there aren't a lot of stations doing this around the country, and I uh, really appreciate what you do. Um, I'm going to kind of change what I was going to talk about because I can't believe what the last caller just said. Um, we have terrible line play. I mean, I know the guys are trying hard. We are, we are just being dominated, not just by UCF, but today by Georgia State on both lines. Holden Naylor's today had zero running game. And I'm no Holden Naylor's apologist, but anybody who watched that game today saw zero running game when the game was on the line. I, I mean, Donnie Kirkpatrick had a terrible game, at least the first quarter and a half, and by that point, the game was almost out of reach. ESPNU threw up a stat during the game of the four running backs who, who got a bunch of carries last week. I think each guy got five to ten carries. Two of those guys, to the best of my knowledge, never got a carry when the game was on the line. I don't even know if they got in the game. Holton had no running game to protect him. The play calls were these short field out screen passes i don't even know what you call them it was it was depressing to watch um so anybody thinks Holt nailers and we need to take a red shirt off of mason garcia i mean are, are you kidding me so he can get clobbered like holton did there's an steve young wasn't going to escape what was going on today i mean we had nothing the last two weeks for our quarterback outside of the first drive last week against ucf our quarterback i don't care who it is was going to get clobbered there was no running game today. Nothing when the game was on the line for the first two and a half, three quarters, even if even that. So anybody who thinks we're going to take a red shirt off of, off of Mason Garcia because he's going to do something different than Holt Naylor, who is kind of a, a mobile quarterback, uh, I, I don't know what you're, what you're doing. I don't know what you're thinking. I think that's absolutely insane. If I look at this team like we've had for the last five years. It all started, I say this every year when I call in once or twice, Temple game, November 1st, Halloween weekend, 2014. Our offense and defensive lines have struggled tremendously. We have not had a really solid defensive line that could take over a game and dominate since 2009. We are not good in the trenches right now. This was a dumpster fire. Mike Houston took over from everything from the talent to the coaching to the administration all the way up to the top at ECU. we got to give this guy time. It's painful. It hurts. It, we all bleed purple and gold. It, it kills us. I'm going to leave my flag hanging on, on, on outside my front door if we go oh and whatever. But let's give this guy time. Don't throw in the towel. And for God's sake, don't give up on your quarterback who has done nothing but run for his life for two weeks. So 
I'm out. Go Pirates. Thanks, Pirate Radio. All right. Good call, Bobby. You might hear Bobby on Monday on the big calls of the fifth quarter. We'll have those for you coming up on Pirate Radio Live. I had a lot to say there, Coach. I appreciate what he said. I appreciate people like Bobby. And to his point, ECU on the day, 26 carries, 50 yards. Take away the Tyler Sneed play. ECU had 25 carries for 19 yards. Ooh. Harris, Penix, and Mitchell had 11 carries for two yards combined. I mean, you want to go worse? I can go worse, unfortunately. Take away the Garcia play at the end of the game and Sneed's play. So then you would have 24 carries minus 40 for nine yards. Well, I think there was what 16. We had our offense had the ball 16 times, 16 series, 16 or 17 uh-huh. times. Right. We had the ball P and 10 possession, first down, 10 to go, uh-huh. and and we didn't score a touchdown. I mean, you just think yeah. the law of averages to catch up with you. Yes, you sir. Get 16 attempts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know. All right, let's get one more in before we take a timeout. Tom is up in Greenville. Hey, Tom. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, this when you look at these last six years here, there's so much, so much drama around this program. And I'm going to say a couple things here. Defenses are not like they used to be, and and offenses are not like they used to be. You can say you can pass to run or run to pass, but now in today's schemes, every week you're fa- you're 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 playing teams that have skill players and they and they fit their offenses to their to their skill players. Now, Holton, I mean, it's obvious we can't run what we're doing right now and do it well. Uh, if it wasn't for Tyler Sneed today, I mean, it was Sneed right, Sneed left, Sneed up the middle, Sneed over the middle, you know, picking up and running. So, you know, the defense didn't play that bad in the second half. They had five, what, five, five and outs, and they gave the ball back over. They had two turnovers, and we got nothing out of it. So, I don't know where we're going to go from here. We're, this program is at a crossroads. We're at a point now that we have to start thinking about turning the south side into, into student housing if this keeps up. All right, Tom in Greenville. The problems have been happening for a while, and, boy, we are in one right now and trying to dig our way out of a giant hole uh, here with this football program, and that is uh, Mike Houston's job. And, unfortunately, it's not going to be a quick fix uh, for Coach Houston and this coaching staff. All right, thanks, Tom. Curtis, John, Pirate Al coming to you next. We have one open line, 317-1250. Phone calls have been hot today. If you got a take, uh, give us a call, 317-1250. We'll get to your call when we return after this. Hi, this is Billy Parker, and football is here. Tailgate at home with family and friends this season and let Parker's Barbecue do all the cooking. While tailgating at your house, let us provide all the food with our delicious chicken, barbecue, seafood, and sides. We can customize packages for any size group, big or small. Give us a call today and place your order. Parker's and football, a winning combination. Also, shipping nationwide at parkersbbq.com. Parker's Barbecue is how friends and family come together. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in Eastern North Carolina. Building in neighborhoods like Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden. These are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders homes. They can custom build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville and many of their other satisfied customers. BMS Builders built their homes and they can build yours too. Contact them today at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports watching drink of all time, Pepsi. Designed to power even the most passionate of armchair quarterbacks, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong, keep you in the zone, and recover from those triumphant wins. Before I was just your average football fan, but thanks to Pepsi, I'm a football watching MVP. Nothing can stop me from cheering my team on a victory or overreacting when the ref makes a bad call. What do you mean he wasn't in? That looks like two feet to me. With refreshing deliciousness, specially formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi is the premier football-watching beverage. I used to care when Mike cheered so hard he spilled nacho cheese on my carpet or wiped buffalo sauce on my new couch. But thanks to Pepsi, I'm so in the zone, even Mike can't ruin my football party. (sighs) See? Don't even care. So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football-watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. 
Medicare is not one size fits all, but which plan is right for you? Hi, I'm Denise Walker and I'm a licensed insurance agent here in North Carolina. Whether you are turning 65, new to Medicare, or already have a plan, I can help you compare your Medicare options. I can help you find a plan offering low to no monthly premiums, prescription drug coverage, and a wide range of additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and more. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Did you know your small change can make a difference? The next time you visit McDonald's, please consider rounding up for the Ronald McDonald House. Your change adds up and can help many folks in Eastern North Carolina. Just $10 can provide a free night stay for families with sick children here in Eastern North Carolina and across the state. Just ask your cashier at checkout or choose to round up for RMHC when ordering through the McDonald's app. Thank you for visiting your local McDonald's owned by Dixon Foods and for your support of the Ronald McDonald House of East. Eastern North Carolina. Did you know you can help prevent natural gas emergencies? Whether you're planting a tree, putting up a fence, landscaping, or starting an excavation project, Greenville Utilities strongly encourages you to follow the law and call NC811. Even minor contact with a natural gas pipeline could cause a natural gas emergency. Before digging or excavation of any kind, North Carolina law requires you call NC811. Please call at least three full working days in advance so all utility lines can be professionally marked prior to digging. Stay safe. Avoid damages and call 811 before you dig. Hey everybody, this is David Glenn and you're listening to my favorite station in Eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Quarter post-game call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, we had a lot of interaction during the Bud Light pregame tailgate. That was a lot of fun. This is not as much fun following a pirate loss, but uh, thank you for calling in, for chiming in, uh, for posting on Facebook Live and watching us on YouTube Live. And uh, we have had the lines locked and loaded today, Coach Smith. A lot of folks want to give their thoughts on this football game. Clip Rock, Rick Smith here in the studio. We got Pirate Al hanging on, John hanging on, and we will now go to Curtis in Atlanta. Hey, Curtis. Hey, how's everything going? Well, not bad, considering. Just, yeah, I know. Just driving back from Atlanta, me and my wife decided to go up Thursday night and watch Sport the Pirates today from from uh, Lake Waccamaw and um, coming home disappointed. But you know, hey, it's uh, it's a rocky road right now. But uh, my my thoughts on the game, I was kind of like Coach. Um, I wish there at the end that he gave maybe Garcia the last quarter, maybe to possibly play just to see, because if I'm not mistaken, what we've had 250 or less yards the last two weeks in total offense, um, you know, and Garcia comes in, you know, with, with 18 seconds to play and throws two pass or runs one and throws one pass. I'm sitting on the 40 yard line today. And I noticed, I told my wife during the game, I said, you know, this is the first team that really hadn't, dwarfed us in size as far as the offensive line goes but the um the their defense was uh was so much so much faster and uh than we were today um but uh our and we can't seem to they're putting they're loading the box and they're, they're putting everybody within seven eight yards of the football and daring us to throw it deep and we just can't do it i don't know what the problem is like everything we little out passes little dump passes across the middle. I mean, we're not throwing the ball deep at all. And I, I know Ehlers, is, he's, a, he's a tough, hard-nosed kid. Um, I, I really like the kid for the last few years. Um, but, you know, he's whenever he first got here, he took it down and running. And it's like time he, he's, it's like he's, I don't know, he's not, he's not like he's, he's actually playing the game. He's, he's instructed to do something, and that's what he's doing. He's not, um, play into his ability because I think his running game is one of his strongest parts because he's always had he's always looked kind of funny throwing the football to me um now Garcia whenever he threw that one you can tell he's got flat out got a cannon and um you know he's uh the ball just jumps out of his hand and I, I'm like coach I don't understand where the top notch supposedly top recruit ever to come to East Carolina and he gets 18 seconds to play I mean, you know, playing for the last half of the fourth quarter or something, give him a chance. But, you know, uh, I, I'm supporting Coach Houston. I think he's 
I think I seen something earlier in the year, too. Was that correct? Did I see where we had 58 new players? Did I see that on Stephen Igo's site? I think it was, uh, I think 54 is the number there, uh, Curtis. But yeah, you're, you're right on it. Yeah, okay. And what um, I noticed today on offensive line, Smith was is he injured or something? Did he get injured last week? I noticed he didn't play. Tonight. Yeah, uh, and I I don't know for a fact because they don't give us an injury report or anything. But I you know I'd, I'd read uh, concussion you know like symptoms for Deontay Smith, who is your most oh, okay. experienced tackle, your your left tackle, and you know that that's a huge hole that uh, he left today. Exactly, and then I noticed during halfway through the game we changed the whole right side of the line. We uh. Bailey and was it Malovich both yeah. come out? We had different people on that side of the right line, right side of the line. And whenever, whenever the the quarterback and the running back, as soon as the ball snaps, is having to dodge or run from people, you know, there's there's not a whole a whole lot of offense can do. I mean, um, it's uh, that's the one thing I've seen in the last four years that we really got to we got to get better at it, the, the offensive line. But just a few few words from here and. Um, Heading back to uh, Lake Waccamaw, North Carolina, but um, you know we'll be me and my wife just talking about possibly riding to Florida and see him play next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, good but, for uh, you, Curtis. Uh, keep supporting him, man, and uh, good call. Appreciate you tuning in today. All right, there's all right, uh, yes, sir. Thanks. There's Curtis coming back from the game. Well, you know, I was concerned. Uh, you know, I've always kind of kept up with, you know, even even though I've been retired, I've tried to keep up with recruiting and every every year kind of know what we're losing and what we need. And the last, the first two years I retired, looking at who we signed, we never met our goal of signing offensive linemen. And uh, when Coach Houston got here, I can assure you that that was the biggest shock that they had was the offensive linemen we had here on campus. And offensive linemen are the hardest thing to sign. And if he's a good offensive lineman, everybody in the country's on him. Uh, but I can't remember if it was my first year in retirement or my second year in retirement, but I think it was the second year I kind of kept up with it. And I said, we need to sign nine offensive linemen. And we signed three. So we were six short that year. This last year, I know uh, Coach Houston went after offensive linemen, and if I'm not mistaken, we signed seven or eight, but, you know, they're freshmen. So, uh, And we've been down on offensive linemen really for about three years. And it's going to take a while, uh, you know, to get the offensive linemen. And it's probably with the hardest position to find in recruiting – but it's also the toughest position to play mentally. Uh, I mean, it's tough on an offensive lineman to to look at the defense and they shift and you got to know who to block. I mean, it's hard for a freshman to play on the offensive line. I, and again, I'm not making excuses for anybody, but the the toughest place to coach in college football is the offensive line. The second tough to, place to coach is the secondary. Uh, but Coach shankwiler has got his hands full. He's got a, you know, and uh, I can assure you from the years I coached with Coach Shankweiler, it is not coaching. It's it's getting the young guys to to grow up, and you know we just got to keep recruiting, you know, offensive linemen and and just get them better through the years. It's nothing, nothing's easy about coaching the offensive line, and nothing's easy about recruiting offensive linemen. It's been a snake bid position as well. We have had some talented guys that we thought would help out, especially at center with John Spellacy and with Peyton Winstead, and they both uh, had injuries. Spellacy had to stop playing, and Donovan right. Noel was a big offensive line recruit who also had health issues. And could, yeah. So it's like a little bit of everything. I think overall, though, it is a lack of bringing in those numbers at the yeah. line position. You know, and you don't have any depth. I mean, it's, just, it's tough. All right, uh, John is up next in Florida. Hey, John. Good afternoon, fellas. Um, I just want to speak on... Can you turn us down in the background there, John? We can't hear you. There you go. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep, yeah. gotcha. Okay, I just want to speak on Mr. Bobby's comments earlier in the call. Um, everybody this year at NCAA regulations, they have another red shirt year which means Mason Garcia can have the rest of the snaps this year and come back as a freshman next year, which I think will really look good with the ECU's offense 
and who spread out wide. And I have another comment on, did y'all see Josiah Hatfield out there today? I didn't see him. No, and um, I don't know if he was dealing with, with something, too, as far as injuries. Again, we don't get an injury report anymore. Uh, but, no, he has been MIA uh, here these first two weeks, and he was a big weapon uh, for the Pirates last year. Yes, sir. All right, John, anything else? No, uh, that's all. Okay. Thank you for tuning in and giving us a call. Uh, 317-1250. That was John down in Florida. Let's go to Pirate Al in Atlantic Beach. Hey, Al. Hey, hey, uh, Clip. Uh, hey, C- Coach Smith, you just talked about uh, exactly what I wanted to say just just a second ago. Um, uh, we, we had a, Steve Logan was our head coach for eleven years, and uh, when, whenever we had a signing day, uh, he you know, they'd always ask him, "Hey, Coach, what do you think about this recruiting class?" His his comeback every single time was, "I don't know. Ask me in three or four years." <laughs> so, I, I, I think what's happened is. I know what happened Happened is from 2015 to 2018, we, uh, th- if you look at our, our depth chart, those years, I mean, we, we, we uh, especially talent-wise, I mean, uh, Lyman and everything else, I mean, we, we are, we're decimated. I bet you 80, 85% of those guys uh, either got thrown off the team, quit, weren't good enough. There's a reason why. I mean, we, we just don't have the talent on the team, I mean, we're playing with freshmen. I mean, we got we got some talented, skilled kids, but I mean, in the trenches, uh, our, uh, maybe a couple corners of five nine um, linebackers. We just don't have. And it's, and, I mean, Houston and the guys. I mean, they won a national championship three years ago. They played for one two years ago. They know what they're doing. Um, we just don't have the talent. I mean, we don't have the the, the juniors and senior talent out there, even redshirt sophomores, really talent that we need to compete especially the american and i think we will but i mean that's what it boils down to man we hit on i mean we missed on a lot of kids those three or four years in recruiting this pain we're paying the price for now i think that's 90 percent of what our problem is i believe you're right uh well i know you're right uh i mean you're supposed to sign nine offensive linemen one year and you sign three well now you're six in the hole you know what? What and that that catches up with you in a couple of years. Instead of you, you know, having those nine guys or those six guys that you're working with for a couple of years, there's no bodies there at all. So maybe the next year, you you know, two years later, you pay the price for not recruiting what you should have recruited, you know, two years earlier. Uh, and when Montgomery was here, I'm telling you, the last two years of recruiting, we didn't get any offensive linemen. I know one year, like I said, I was expecting us to sign. The second year I was in retirement, I had you know, my little recruiting sheet that I kept, and we were supposed to sign like seven or eight offensive linemen, and we signed three. Well, two years later, that recruiting class kills you on the field because you got no offensive linemen. I, I agree, Coach. We, you know. just, uh, we just have to be patient. I mean, Houston's a white coach. We've got the right staff. I mean, we just uh, – you can't – I mean, we just got to <laughs> – it's just going to be a three- or four- or five-year process, and I know it's killing them. Losing. It, it, took us, losing. Yeah, it took us five or six so, years to get where we're at, and it's going to take at least three to get out of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all i got to say, guys. We just have to uh, – we just have to be patient because the talent level when he got here was not good, and it's, it's, it's going to take a while. Well, as a retired football coach, I appreciate your attitude, and I appreciate people like you. <laughs> If, yes, any, if anybody knows the roster in recruiting, it's Pirate Al, that's for sure. Uh, Pirate Al, thanks for the call, man. There's uh, Al in Atlantic Beach. Let's go now to Taylor in Gromsland. Hey, Taylor. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for doing what you do. You do, do a fantastic job, especially in a year like this when it's a little, little, uh, little challenging, to say the least. Unfortunately, Taylor, we're used to years like this. I'd rather not be, but uh, it's kind of how it's been, man. <laughs> I understand. I mean, I, I'm, you know, sort of seconding what these guys are saying. I think that, you know, Coach Moe's vision for this team and Coach Houston's vision for this team is is obviously two different visions. And, and the style of players are just, I think, night and day. I mean, I think, you know, we tried to do our best, but to y'all's point, getting three out of nine offensive linemen, you're not going to do much in a couple of years. I mean, that, you know... <laughs> Hate to pick on that right side tackle, but you know I looked down twice again and number seventy one, and I thought to myself, 
my God, their tight end is, you know, bigger than, than our than our weak side tack. Um, you're just not going to have a lot of luck with that, in my opinion. And and I think you've got, I think you've got talent at at some positions. I mean, obviously you see it there, but you've also got a lack of talent in in the same secondary or on the, on the line, offensive line, defensive line. It's just it's brutal. Um, don't really have a cohesive team, and um, and I think the Garcia boy's got a cannon. I mean, he's going to be great. But to y'all's point earlier, sticking him out there with two seconds to throw the ball, I mean, my confidence would be shaking a little bit. And I just feel like that's, you know, what we're what we're dealing with. I mean, Holt Naylor's is a great, great ball player, but he can't stretch the field if he's got a second and a half to throw it. So it's just, um, I think we got, you know, it's going to take some time, no doubt about it. All right, Taylor. That indeed, uh, we have to be patient, and maybe more patient than we thought after today's uh, result, forty-nine to twenty-nine. I think we'll get there. I, I agree with the other callers. I don't think we need to be, you know, undaunted is what we need to be right now. It's just going to take us a little bit more time. All right, thank you, Taylor, for the call three one seven twelve fifty. Let's take a time out. We'll come back. Kyle and Lagrange is up next, and Shirley is answering calls right now so i think we have a couple open lines 317-1250 if you want to jump in talk to myself and coach rick smith who joins us on the u.s sailor fifth quarter call-in show we are back after this i want some barbecue some barbecue while you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been to torch bears for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! UBE and PirateWear.com are proud to offer the Pirate Nation its largest inventory ever. Brand new Adidas is arriving daily, along with Under Armour, Columbia, and Russell Athletic. UBE is loaded with cargo, and new items are being added daily to PirateWear.com. Be sure to check out our children's store, The Crow's Nest, for all of your young pirates. UBE and PirateWear.com, an ECU tradition for 50 years. Go Pirates! Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top-rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank. FNB member FDIC. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. But Greenville Auto World, cross some hardies at Bell's Fork. Hey, this is Jay from Villa Verde. Did you know the Villa Verde opened up its second location? Yes, it's Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard across the hospital. This new location is a fast, casual environment where you can make your own bowls for only $9.95. Choose from our fresh ingredients, from our toppings bars, or enjoy an amazing rotisserie chicken. We promise you can be in and out in less than 15 minutes. For a quick, healthy meal at an affordable price, visit us at Villa Verde Dos on Arlington Boulevard. Villa Verde, a platform for good. 
In studio with Gloria from Kinetic Physical Therapy, what kind of wellness services do you guys offer? We have massage therapy with your choice of either a relaxation massage, a therapeutic stretching session, or a prenatal massage. We have foot reflexology. We partner with Pirate Cryo for cryotherapy, also known as cold therapy, and we have health and wellness coaching. And if you're interested in holistic body therapy and saving money, we encourage you to check out our wellness membership plan where you can have all of our wellness services at a constant discounted price. You can learn more today at kptonline.com. This is Coach Blake Carroll, defense coordinator for East Carolina football. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Quarter post-game call-in show. Here's Clip Brock. All right, 317-1250 the number, but we have lines locked and loaded at the moment as we have had just about the entire show today as uh, we recap ECU and Georgia State and the Panthers put 49 on the Pirates, 49-29. The score today in Atlanta, Coach Rick Smith here alongside. As we take your calls, we got John B. Pays, Chris hanging on. Let's go to Kyle and LaGrange. Hey, Kyle. Kyle. Let's try one more time. Uh, why you? Kyle, are you there? All right. Well, you want to try Chris and Winterville? Uh, Line one. This is Kyle from LaGrange. There's Kyle. Hey, Kyle. <laughs> Go on, Cliff. I don't know. Having uh, a, we need a 30-second uh, timeout, I would think, Kyle. Uh, no, we're good. What's up, man? Hey, ain't much, man. I, I tell you what, I'm just going to repeat kind of what everybody else has said uh, the last couple calls that I've heard anyway. Uh, it's going to take time. I mean, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, you look, and I think we have 54 new guys on the roster this year. I mean, that should have kind of been a alert to everybody right there. Um, kind of like, like Al said, Pirate Al, you know, we, we, when Coach Montgomery was here, you know, I really don't know what his plan was, but he did not do a good job of recruiting, particularly in the trenches. He, he missed. A lot of recruiting classes on offensive line and didn't bring any in here. Um, and they're hard to get from the junior college ranks and from grad transfers. That's like the hardest position if you're going the grad transfer route or even hitting the JUCOs. It's really hard to get O linemen. So you, you got to kind of build it from the ground up with high school kids, and it just ain't easy. And then the defense, you know, they played better in the second half. I do think Georgia State took their foot off the gas, but they played better in the second half. Early on, when it, our defense looked lost. I don't know if if they did some things offensively that we weren't expecting, because it didn't just look like personnel on defense early. Those guys looked confused and lost at times. Uh, they seemed to get their bearings later, but I don't know. Uh, like I said, if they did some things we weren't expecting. Um, special teams, obviously, was the highlight. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can do some things there and try to make games more competitive. It, it, yeah. Coach Smith, can, yeah. I know you coach on the defense side of the ball, but can you – once the season starts, how much can an offensive line improve from the beginning of the season to the end? Well, I think they can improve quite a bit. It depending on how you practice, and, and from what I've heard, uh, they are practicing the right way. They do go live a couple of days a week. Uh, Tuesday, uh, they have live action. You know, ones the one one offense to go against the one defense for maybe eight to ten plays and then the one offense to go against the two defense for some plays and then they'll go live again some on wednesday you know one offense against two defense for maybe eight to ten plays but uh you know you just can't you can't go over i would say our offensive lines getting probably uh in a team situation maybe 40 snaps a week live and then now they'll they'll have some live stuff you know just one-on-one uh you know working against the defensive lineman in pass protection uh the d line will go down to where the o-line is and they'll they'll put a defensive end one-on-one against an offensive tackle you know and it'll just be a one-on-one rush uh which you know and then they'll put a an offensive guard in there going one-on-one against a, a defensive tackle, you know, so they get the one-on-one pass rush stuff. And, you know, we just didn't uh, – we didn't look very good today the first half. 
No, and, and that's what I hope. You know, even with the defensive struggles, had our O line just been able to, you know, be look like a Division One FBS O line, if we'd have just been mediocre, we could have won that football game. But some of the plays we made on special teams, and with the defensive improvement in the second half, if our O line just could have protected Holton, and, and we couldn't get a running game going. You know, they couldn't run block today. They did that well against UCF, not today. If we could have just ran the ball a little bit and and protected Holton, we'd have won that football game. There's no doubt. Um, anyway, move on to South Florida. South Florida struggling too. Uh, yeah, I've played Cincinnati today. It'll be interesting to see what they do in that one. But get ready for next week, guys. Go Pirates. All right, Kyle in LaGrange. And uh, I believe that game's going on right now. Let me check and see if I can get a score between – uh, Cincinnati and South Florida. Right now, Cincinnati a 7 nothing lead with 5.32 left to go in the first half. So, South Florida hanging around with the Bearcats. SMU up 24-10 to on Memphis in the second quarter. All right, uh, let's go to B. Pays and Raleigh next. What's up, Pays? What's up, Cliff? What's up, Coach? What's up? Uh, co- coach, I got a question for you. So, do you think East Carolina has had offensive line struggles even before this five-year period, but a lot of them were hidden because of the offense that we ran. Because, you know, I I remember us going out and trying to get some JUCO guys to fill some holes and things like that, even during the rough years. But the offense we ran with Cardin and the way he ran that offense, was it just something that it was a little bit quicker? And the number two question on that is, is it because are we struggling offensive line because we've kind of changed offenses? We went from the air raid to, I guess, Coach Mo ran the more of a spread, and this is a little bit different from the spread. Do you think that's a that's a, a determining factor? What's going on right now? I think that's part of it. We, uh, you know, Coach Montgomery was kind of a run and shoot guy, throw it, and uh, you know, Coach Houston's came in here and he's trying to do what he's done everywhere he's been. You know, establish the run. Uh, you know, and try to be 50-50 run pass. But, uh, you know, that's probably the biggest the biggest problem we have right now is, is I don't know, today we look fragmented. Like we just weren't, uh, you know, just from watching it on TV. I, I, I didn't know if our kids wanted to play today. <laughs> and I'm, uh-huh. I, I've heard that from two other people. Uh, you know, but, you know, you get discouraged when you – I don't know. You know, you give up three touchdowns in a row, you know, the second series, third series, fourth series, and that's 21 points. Uh, you know, in halftime, it's 35 to 13. Uh, you got to really fight to come out of that hole. I don't know if I answered yeah, your I, question. <laughs> but. No, yeah, you did. I was just, you know, because, I, you know, I was, you know, an offensive lineman in the air raid, was different than offensive linemen and you know what we're trying to do now and that was that was my question i mean if and if i'm wrong about this uh forget air raid. that you know the air was a little bit more taller and kind of slimmer and this one i think like they, they want people a little bit more they're trying to put some weight on some guy i know they're they're light right now but well i mean when you throw a quick route those routes are broken off you know five to six yards deep uh-huh. And the ball comes out of the quarterback's hand 1.5 seconds. Uh So there's not a lot of time, you know, to get to the quarterback. Uh, Yeah. Even if you blitz, a lot of times, you know, the ball's out before a blitz can get there. How how long does it take a a defensive lineman to be in a stance and run up the field seven yards? It takes more than 1.5 seconds, and that's when the ball came out, you know, of the quarterback's hand. Uh, uh-huh. I think we are running a whole different, a uh, whole different offense compared to what they did when Montgomery was here. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree. Well, I appreciate it, Coach. Appreciate it, Cliff. Y'all have a, uh, a good day. All, All right, right, Paige. Thanks, man. Three one seven twelve fifty. We have a few open lines if you want to jump in, and we have John hanging on in Charlotte. Hey, John. Cliff, was well, come on, guys. Come on, guys. <laughs> hey, we got to get Coach saying that now, right? Coach, you want to give them one? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Hey, look. I'm a Denver Bronco diehard fan, and y'all are absolutely right. If you don't have offensive line, then you don't have anything. Uh, the offensive line gets 
disregarded in the NFL so many times. Oh, look, we need to get a wide receiver. We need to get a running back, whatever. No, if if you don't have, and tell me if I'm wrong, Coach, if you don't have an offensive line, man, that's the, that is the – the foundation of an offensive offensive line. Yeah. So anyway, Pirate Radio rocks. I love you guys. Y'all need to give Shirley a raise. And uh, love listening to your show. <laughs> All right, John. There well, he is. Come on, guys. Well, offensive linemen are the hardest to find in recruiting. There's less offensive linemen out there to recruit than any other position. Now you can sign a, a defensive lineman that's six foot three and weighs two ten, and one day he might be six foot four and weigh, you know, two fifty. But to find offensive <coughs> linemen, uh, you know, it's just really hard because you know you take a chance on taking an offensive lineman. Okay, he's six six, and he weighs two hundred twenty pounds. Well, he may never be over two fifty. Well, two fifty isn't big enough anymore on the offensive line. So again. Just from recruiting for 49 years, the toughest thing to find is offensive linemen. And when you find one, I can assure you that everybody else is going to find him too. And you're, he's going to have you know three or four offers, five offers, and, and it all comes down to recruiting. Uh, you can develop defensive linemen. It's tough to develop offensive linemen. they they got to have the size basically when they get here. Yeah, three one seven twelve fifty the number, and we have open lines for the first time the entire show. So if you want to jump in, you can now. Three one seven twelve fifty. Take another time out. Come back and have more for you on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Back after this. Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hey, Pirate Nation, Warren's Hot Dogs, two locations are open for business in Greenville and Chocowinity. Both locations have drive through windows, so stop by today for hot dogs, pizzas, subs, apple and peach turnovers, homemade lemonade, and breakfast in Chocowinity, featuring homemade cheese, ham, and chicken biscuits, plus sausage dogs and more. Warren's in Greenville across from Ron Ayers Motorsports and in Chocowinity next to the fire department. Warren's Hot Dogs. Want some? Get some. Weekdays are a great time to visit North Carolina State Parks. The best time to learn about nature is to be able to look, listen, and feel its natural beauty. A visit to the North Carolina State Parks is perfect for homeschoolers, scout groups, and teachers looking for a fun field trip during the week. You'll be amazed at all the natural wildlife you'll see when you experience the beauty of each North Carolina State Park. Visit ncparks.gov to get all the information on the closest park near you. If you are push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports. It will guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. Do you think you might have been exposed to COVID-19? Maybe you're planning to visit parents, family, or friends. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers same-day COVID-19 results. No referral needed. Same-day results available. Arc Point Labs of Greenville offers easy solutions to COVID-19 testing. Arc Point Labs of Greenville is located across from Biden Hospital on Executive Circle behind Southern Bank. Call for an appointment or walk in. Arc Point Labs of Greenville, 215-5688 or arcpointlabs.com. Can't make it to the game? Relax. Caustic Sug Furniture can provide you with the best seats in the house. We have the area's largest selection of Lazy Boy motion furniture in stock and ready to go. Lazy Boy recliners, reclining sofas, love seats, and reclining sectionals in hundreds of colors, styles, fabrics, and leather. All at a very comfortable price. Remember, when it comes to Lazy Boy motion furniture, we're your ticket to the best seats in the house. Caustic Sug Furniture in Greenville. 
The fun place to dine out with friends and family is Familia. Familia has something for everyone and offers favorites like New York style pizza, lasagna, homemade meatballs, plus new specials like chicken parm alfredo, mahi fish and chips, chicken piccata, veggie burger, butternut squash ravioli, and more. If you need food to go, Familia's drive through window is open and ready for all takeout orders. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. The Frowls family lives on a lush piece of land called Greener Pasture, and they work on it behind the wheel of a John Deere 1 Series tractor. With its durable construction and features that hook up to dozens of attachments with ease, no job is too tough. The Frowls family runs with us, because this is more than just land. It's home. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 Series for more. Get quality at every turn with quality equipment. Your local John Deere dealer with 27 locations in North Carolina and southeastern Virginia. Find out more at qualityequip.com. Pirate Radio. And you write that down, because when you're at East Carolina, you go for it every time. Or you don't coach at East Carolina, you don't come to East Carolina, you don't play at East Carolina with a weak heart. Write it! The Voice of the Pirate Nation. Here's Clip Brock. Now, with the Pirate Radio scoreboard, here's Shirley Rhodes. All right, let's start with the finals from earlier this afternoon. Florida beat South Carolina 38-24. Coastal Carolina beat up on Arizona State 52-23. 21st-ranked Tennessee gets by Missouri 35-12. NC State scores in the late of uh, fourth quarter, and they are able to squeak by uh, Pittsburgh 30 to 29. TCU uh, defeated Texas 33 to 31, and West Virginia won an ugly game over Baylor 27 to 21 in double overtime. All of these games going on in the second quarter. Cincinnati has a 14 nothing lead over South Florida. Memphis trails SMU 24 to 10. It's North Carolina 14, Boston College 13. Oklahoma State has a 31 nothing lead over Kansas. Kansas State has a 14-0 lead over Texas Tech. Texas A&M trails Alabama 21-14. Ole Miss and Kentucky are tied at 14 apiece. Virginia Tech and Duke are tied at 7. And Jacksonville State leads Florida State 14 to nothing. And that is a look at your Pirate Radio scoreboard. Now let's head back into the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter postgame call-in show. Here's your host, Cliff Brock. All right, and... Coach Smith, I don't know what's going on down in Tallahassee, but Florida State did just score, but they trailed Jacksonville State 14-7 to in the second quarter. So, got issues all over uh, college football <laughs> right now. All right, uh, 317-1250. We have a couple open lines. Scott, we'll get to you in just a moment. We'll go to David and Raleigh now. Hey, David. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Well, we know how everybody's doing today. I'm not going to uh, <laughs> try to do what everybody else is try to figure out what's the problem because I don't know half as much well, a 10% of what coach does next to you but here is my concern I've been sitting in those stands in Greenville since coach Emory and I remember some rough years in the 80s and then we had the magical 92 uh, peach ball and after that East U kind of became a culture um, kids wanted to play there and they wanted to play there because of Dowdy Pickling and they wanted to play there because of our fan base and they wanted to play there because we were a football school. Well, back when that started, there were far less D1 programs in our in, in the area. If you look at ODU and Charlotte and App and Coastal. So it, some of these offensive linemen possibly ended up on our teams back then. So it's a little more difficult for what I would call the non-mid-majors. So we were, we, were the, we were the place to come on the East Coast, even before Fresno State. Their coach, you know, were, we were the giant killers. We would take Miami to the house. My concern is, is our attendance has been dropping pretty steadily. We're in a deep financial hole. We have competition from the Georgia states now. I, I, I don't, I don't want to say it's the end of an era, but I'm concerned. Am I, am I just one of those fans that's really nervous, or is it a different situation today than it was when we built this program? 
No, I mean, look, David, I, today proved that Georgia State is better than East Carolina. I mean, Appalachian State has, uh, it, it, right now, is better than ECU. I mean, I've watched Coastal Carolina this year. They beat Kansas. Kansas isn't any good. But to go on the road and beat Kansas, can ECU do that right now? I don't know. I mean, all these programs you're talking about have uh, have caught up. And, and they've gotten better they while, less- while we've gotten worse. Yeah. They have less facilities than we do. I mean, yeah. we have pretty good. I, I travel all over the country. Our facilities, while they may not be up to Alabama, what what, do I, what am I missing? I mean, when a kid looks at an ODU or a Georgia Southern and, and, and an ECU, I, I don't understand. Even, even Charlotte, who's, you know, you got to give them some credit, but I don't understand how we're not, worst case scenario, at that level. Coach Smith, uh, what do you what do you think about it? He's right though. Back then, and in, in the era he's talking about, the eighties, nineties, you didn't have to worry about these other schools competing to get players that you wanted. Well, now that's not the case. Uh, that, that you know, kids are going to have state over ECU and, and other places like that. Well, I think that's true. And I, uh, you know, recruiting, like I said, is a it's a it's a tough deal. And now, when I came here fifteen, sixteen years ago. I can honestly say that our facilities were extremely poor. Seriously. The locker room that the kids were in. Skip Holtz did a fantastic job uh, and the athletic director of, of changing the facilities, you know, that first five years Skip was here. Now, and then the five or six years that Ruff was here, and, and who, I can't remember the AD, but we couldn't get anything done to the facilities and we got further and further behind but i can assure you we don't have great facilities here uh compared to some other schools and you go look at what appy state has and what we have and you're going to be shocked because i've seen both facilities uh go go look at what charlotte has and that's how you uh, you get kids attracted to your program. Show yeah. them that shiny stuff and recruiting. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, David, hang in there, man. Uh, maybe a new era needs to begin. Uh, the Mike Houston era, and uh, we hope it gets roll, uh, rolling here soon because things are bleak at the moment after losing by twenty to Georgia State today. All right. Three one seven twelve fifty. Scott is up next in Goldsboro. Hey, Scott. Hey, buddy. How you doing, man? All right. Great time. Uh, yeah, I just uh, appreciate you guys, man. Fire Radio Rocks. Uh, just questions for, uh, a couple questions for uh, Coach Smith, please. Um, I, I know we run, you know, the spread era, wh- whatever you want to call it, not air raid, but the spread, in which uh, pretty much most college teams run. But when you're having, like, uh, and I hate to be the dead horse, but when you're having such uh, limited time getting the ball out, um, can you go to any, like, type of mat- mass, uh, max protection type stuff, like, like pulling in the tight ends for the extra blockers or? I don't know. It just seemed like we were running the same play all day long. Thank you. Well, now, what they were doing to us today, uh, they they brought five defensive players a, a lot, and they twisted the four down linemen, and they would bring a linebacker. But they, they didn't really just line up and blitz, which is six or seven people. They were bringing five a lot. And we only had five to block. We had a center, two guards, and two tackles, and they were bringing – five so it's five against five uh you know and so you got to be perfect your five had to block their five or the quarterback's got to get rid of the ball uh you know and if it we threw a lot of slants today and some hitches and you know the ball's got to be out of the quarterback's hand in 1.5 seconds at the least for those those short routes uh we can't we can't protect long enough for the quarterback to throw, you know, to throw a 15-yard curl or a 15-yard out, uh, you know, because now he can hold the ball for two, 2.2 2 seconds. Uh, and we just uh, we didn't hold up very well today. Our tackles had a hard time. All right. Thanks for the call, Scott. 317-1250. Irving is up next in Raleigh. Hey, Irving. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Uh, and I've come in uh, late here, so the question I'm going to ask, I think, may have just been partially addressed, if not completely. But uh, I know the subject's been recruiting, and uh, I grew up in Greenville. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been watching East Carolina since '71. I mean, when I was a little kid, and I can remember the Sonny Randall era, the Pat Dye era, and a lot of the recruiting that was done then. It seems to me, as I recall, was you know kids working farms. I mean, kids that 
you know, didn't even play football. They played basketball. And somehow or another, uh, they were able to, get, able to get these kids over here and turn them into really good football players. Is that just a bygone era? You know, I, mean, I guess the question is directed to Coach Smith. Is, is, is that sort of recruiting just, you know, in the past, never to be revisited? Well, before all the rule changes, uh, okay, let, let's go to Florida State in the 70s. There wasn't any rules on how long you can work kids a week. There wasn't no such thing as the 20-hour rule. The 20-hour rule has limits you to basically during the season, you have 20 hours a week, which you got 17 hours a week to prepare your football team for the game, and they consider the game three. Now, in the off season, in the off season, you get 10 hours a week to prepare your football team. That's in the weight room and some agility stuff that you can do during the summer. I I remember back when Bill Peterson was at Florida State University, uh, I can assure you in the offseason, it was not a 20-hour rule. Those kids worked in the weight room, you know, five days a week for about three hours and went out and ran. It was pure torture. And you could build you know kids up because you, you you had unlimited time and you also had instead of practicing an hour and 45 minutes because of the 17 hour rule per week you may practice four hours uh and they've changed all those rules because uh they felt like the kids were being you know used or abused and probably were <laughs> uh, i can assure you when bill peterson was at florida state uh a game week those kids were on the field more than 17 hours a week practicing. They were probably out there 30 hours a week practicing. <clears throat> and the same thing here when Coach Dye was here. <laughs> right. I guess, and I guess the situation is that is hopefully all the schools are playing by the same rules apparently East Carolina is. Yeah, they are. Everybody has the same rules. You can't... Uh, Basically, on Sunday, you can have your players four hours on Sunday. You can never have your kids over four hours a day, and you can't have them over 20 hours a week, and the game counts as three. So basically, you know, Sunday's four hours. They're off on Monday. You have to give them one day off a week, which for years they didn't get a day off. They played on Saturday. They practiced on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and played again on Saturday. Uh, well, now you you have the the six days a week. You can't do anything one day a week. You got to give them, and most people give them Monday off. Some people give them Sunday off. But I, you know, how do you give them Sunday off when you want to look at the game tape? But here they give them Monday off, and so and Sunday counts as four hours because you're going to look at the film, do a do a weight workout and a flush workout and condition. So Sunday is a four-hour day, basically, and uh, they're off Monday. So you have 13 hours left to prepare your football team on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But supposedly everybody that you're playing has the same time restraints that you have. Well, well thank you, Coach. I, I, I appreciate uh, your take on it. And uh, go Pirates, we'll, we'll, we'll get better. All right. Well. There is Irving in Raleigh. 317-1250, we have open lines. Let's get another break in. We'll come back, have more for you on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. Back after this. Sawyer's Fun Park is now open in Greenville. This state-of-the-art 40,000 square foot facility features a two-story LED interactive laser tag, a one-of-a-kind two-story ninja course, a ropes course with a 180-degree zip line, and it's only one of five in the country that are indoors, multiple climbing walls, a super cool arcade with 40-plus games, and a brand-new full-service cafe and bar for adults. Visit the brand-new Sawyer's Fun Park, now open, located right behind ARU on Corey Road. Road, Greenville. It's bow time. <laughs> the barbecue sandwich from Bojangles is back. Wait, wait. Bojangles has barbecue? Yeah, keep going. Well, okay then. <clears throat> We're talking tender pulled pork with a tangy Carolina vinegar kick. Unforgettably topped with our country coleslaw, all on perfectly toasted buns. So if you're like me and missed it last time, get your hands on a barbecue sandwich combo pronto. 
It's bow time. <laughs> Let us help you get back to business. This is Donald Stocks and Justin Judge of PIP of Eastern North Carolina. We're ready to assist your business with branded PPE. Would you like face masks with your logo? We can do that. Plus custom social distancing signage. Now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts. Whether it's cutting edge, contactless, touchless marketing, or traditional direct mail, we can do it all. We are PIP, PIP of Eastern, Eastern North, North Carolina. Carolina. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now, during hurricane season, is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. Times 12. Order the Jersey Mike's catering box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. It's Jersey Mike's time. One Club Supreme? Check. What's Aaron's way? Only $2.99 for Pepsi and Lay's? I'm in. Order your sub Aaron's way on the Jersey Mike's app or visit a Jersey Mike's store. Banking is banking until service is not the same. This is Eric Clark from Select Bank and Trust, and this year has been unusual, but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us, our customers. When businesses needed access to the Paycheck Protection Program, our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? We are Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. This is assistant football coach Drew Dudzik, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Seven twelve fifty is the number on the Fixed NC Live line, and for the first time tonight, we have open calls, so you can give us a call three one seven twelve fifty. Coach Rick Smith is here, and oh boy, we got to do our Brown and Wood drive of the game. Brought to you by Brown and Wood, serving the Pirate Nation in Eastern North Carolina for over 83 years. Brown and Wood has four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal that you leave a happy customer every time. Brown and Wood on Greenville Boulevard, Greenville, and online, brownandwoodauto.com. Well, you did not have an offensive touchdown today. Tough to think of a drive i mean you had that special team score uh before the half you went on a nice drive and kicked a field goal there at the end of the first half i guess seventh uh, series we 12 plays and a field goal and you uh you took it right to halftime so yeah. i guess that would be our drive of the game but good grief coach uh not a lot to choose from this afternoon unfortunately no it was ugly it was indeed coach we, we were we've had a lot of calls a lot of thoughts about the offensive line and how we got to where we are so i thought i'd i'd check out uh hoist the colors and steven Igo does a great job and can speak more to this but just looking at the commits over the last few years and, and was running over the list with you you, you kind of see why we are where we are right now on the o-line well I, i've been retired four seasons and i can re- I, I was with uh coach shankweiler one one evening uh this summer and he said man it's it's really thin on the offensive line uh, you know i mean he was really talking to me about just there wasn't any wasn't a lot of numbers on the offensive line and i said well i remember you know when i was here with montgomery that was one of the things the first year i, I was only with him one year i was concerned about the offensive line because we should have signed you know seven that year we only signed three and none of those guys are still here in 218 uh we only signed three we should have signed seven uh two of those guys are no longer here two of them's here one of them's injured last year which was 219 that was coach montgomery uh 
Houston. Coach yeah. Houston's first year, but they got here late. Uh, so and, a lot of that class yeah. is from the previous staff. And, and yeah. that that class that they signed, uh, they only signed three. They should have signed seven. So we are very, very thin on the offensive line. And I've said it before on the show today, the toughest position, and I mean this sincerely as a guy that recruited for 49 years, the toughest position to find is offensive linemen. And, and Probably the toughest position to coach in football is the offensive line. So uh, we're going to struggle on offense until we can get that corrected. And I would ask people to be patient and give Coach Shankweiler and Coach Houston time to do it. It took us four years to get where we're at. Give him at least three years to get this thing turned around. In a normal year, if you've got everything balanced like you want your team, how many O-linemen do you want to sign every year, Coach? Probably five to seven. Okay. You know. Yeah. And so we're just we got to play a lot of catch up here. Yeah, I mean, we were we we were four short signing offensive linemen in two seventeen. We were probably three short signing offensive linemen in two eighteen. So you're seven guys behind right there. Last year was Coach Houston's first year here. I know they were trying to sign seven to eight offensive linemen and probably only signed four. So that position is just really thin. And again, like I've said, you can get walk-ons in your program, but again, the toughest guys to get to walk on are offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Offensive linemen, again, being the hardest to get. There's just not enough of them to go around. And they have gone the transfer route in 2020, bringing in Justin Chase from NC State and Avery Jones from North Carolina. And, you know, Mike Houston <clears throat> said earlier this week that they're almost on par with, with where the freshmen are. They're, they're just not integrated into the system yeah. yet, and Hadn't played a ton of football in a while, so kind of starting from square one. And we're seeing yeah. it on the field, unfortunately. All right, uh, Josh is up in Greenville next. Hey, Josh. Uh, hey, Cliff. Hey, about the best thing I've seen tonight is your stash. I'm loving it. Keep it up. Um, uh, we could have done better on D. We did great on D, but the O-line was horrible. But, Cliff, your stash is amazing. <laughs> All right. There you go. Stash of the game. Thank you, uh, Josh. Appreciate it, man. See, Coach, there's one bright spot hey, from tonight, man. I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> much like the game is tough to look at, so is this. But uh, it's here right now. All right. Uh, let's see. Any other uh, – we can look at the UB stat sheet real quick if you want to try to stomach that one more time tonight, Coach. Just kind of ugly all around. And, and we were – even though those yards, and I did call them empty yards against UCF late in the game last week, those rushing yards, 244, I was encouraged by that and thought that that would translate into some success on the ground today. Well, I was completely off on that. 26 carries for 50 yards for ECU today uh, on the UBE stat sheet. Passing the football, Ayler's 29 of 50, 236, no touchdowns, three interceptions uh, today for ECU. Tyler Sneed and Blake Prohl uh, had some big days. They had 11 catches apiece. Sneed got over 100 yards. And, again, we got to figure out what's going on with C.J. Johnson right now. Something's wrong uh, there. He had one catch for zero yards in today's game. He's your big play guy and just not going to cut it. All right, uh, we'll get another call in, 317-1250. Jake is up in Durham. Hey, Jake. Hey, how are you? All right. Um, I was just, I mean, you know, I think everybody's kind of sharing the same frustrations that uh, if you can't compete with the Georgia State team, um, how are you going to compete with AAC? Because we've learned they are no joke. Um, I guess for me, looking at it from North Carolina resident, if we laugh at NC State, UNC, and all these AAC teams who can't, you know, if they can't beat us, who they're going to beat, if we can't beat a Sun Belt team who we didn't have a team 12 years ago, how are we going to compete with Cincinnati, SMU, you know, Memphis, Houston, that kind of stuff? Um, what do you guys think? Well, I mean, I don't know. The games are on the schedule. You're going to go play them. But, I mean, we're going to kick off and see what we can do. I mean, we're not just going to cancel the games. But it, it's pretty bleak, uh, Jake. I'll give you that. Amen. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's – saying that Georgia State is like super athletic and that kind of stuff, is it harder to compete, you know, recruiting to Greenville, to Atlanta, like Houston, Attic, Houston, I get it, you know, 
Houston definitely inherited a mess. Um, but after you know four or five years, because I think I think him and his coaching staff are the solution. I mean, I'm not saying that that they're not, but after four or five years, you just looking you know looking at size, looking at talent, or is it just are you competitive on the field? And Jake, I'm with you by the way. I'm not like pushing your thoughts aside. I'm looking at the schedule right now and finding it difficult to find a win on the 2020 schedule. So I'm with you. Yeah, you know, it's just frustrating. I think all of us are in the same boat. Yeah. Um, I think that Houston probably ripped him a new one at halftime, and, you know, the defense showed up in the second half comparably. Um, and we're making plays in terms of getting turnovers and that kind of stuff in the second half. It's just we love to dig ourselves a hole, and all of us, you know, I think watched the game turned on at 12 o'clock with a lot of optimism, and then by 12.30 we were kind of sitting in the same hole. So... Frustrating is the key word there, Jake. And I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, I don't want to tell you to be patient, but I'm going to tell you to be patient. That's all you can do. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't have any other answers right now. That was kind of rough to watch today. Yeah, I got you. But you know, again, I think Houston is a great guy to have the whole of this team. Um, I think his staff has got a good good outlook on where they want to be i think all of us just want to be there tomorrow instead of in a couple of years but um thank you guys for uh giving me a shout out uh love listening to you guys you guys have a good one all right thanks jake appreciate you listening and calling in man and uh i hear jake uh, I, you, you want it tomorrow and not two years from now coach but you you keep reiterating it to me and to the listeners that it was rough, and and it, you <laughs> you said unless you were in the building, you don't understand how bad it was for ECU under Scotty Montgomery. I, I mean, those were you know, and we will we'll never understand, I guess, because we weren't no, in that won't, building. You won't ever understand. For me to resign from football, which is something I thought I would do until I died. That's how much I loved coaching. That's how miserable I was working for that man in that building. And I'm telling you, everything that's happening right now is a result of him. Hmm. And it is a tough, tough spot and a tough hole, a giant hole to dig out of. All right, uh, last call for your calls, 317-1250. We have open lines, so if you want to jump in late, you can. Uh, one more segment to go with Coach Rick Smith here on the U.S. Sailor Fifth Quarter Call-In Show. We're back after this. Hey, welcome to Jack Brown's. What can I get you? Can I get a vodka soda with a lime, please? No liquor, just beer. We have beer out the wazoo. And we don't even know what a wazoo is. IPAs, sours, gozas, wheat, stouts, porters, you name it, we got it. Drink 100 beers and join the Notch Club. Don't, don't be a nerd. nerd. Ask, Ask about, about the Notch Club. Club. Yeah, we've got the best craft beer in Greenville. Awesome. I'll take a pack to us light. You got it. On the way. Jack Brown's Beer and Burger Joint, located at 805 Dickinson Avenue, right in the heart of Uptown Greenville. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. They thank you for your continued support and trust during these trying times. Many services can be done remotely and free pickup and deliveries available. As a Dell business partner and Apple authorized service provider, you can count on University PC Care for all your personal and business tech support needs. To make a remote appointment or to bring in your device for service at their Greenville or New Bern locations, call 558-1280 or go online at universitypccare.com. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. 
Dad, what's for dinner? How about CPWs? Is that the restaurant with the really good lasagna? It sure is. Is that the place we got the awesome meat pizza? Yep, that's the place. Should we do dine-in or take-out? I'm tired of eating it. Let's go there! Just say no to cooking tonight and bring the family or make it a date night at CPW's. CPW's is open daily at 3 p.m. and has been serving the Greenville community since 1995. CPW's in the Food Line Shopping Center near the hospital. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak fair. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to fair. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. Hi, this is Phil Steele of Phil Steele's College Football Preview Magazine, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. One seven twelve fifty. Talking some football with Coach Rick Smith, who is uh, frustrated just like all the callers are today, and just like I am because uh, I, I did pick Georgia State forty two to forty. I did not expect forty nine to twenty nine. Just like Coach Smith, I thought two or three point game one way or the other. Right? I, That's I, what you had. Yeah, I picked us to win by one thirty one thirty. Yeah, and uh, man, got out of control. And Georgia State picks up the victory. Uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in today and uh, and giving us a call and watching on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. If you want to jump in the last second, you can. 317-1250. Setting up the schedule for next week. We'll be with you 3 o'clock Saturday on the Bud Light pregame tailgate. Taking you up to the 7 o'clock kickoff ECU at South Florida. That's on ESPN+. And then, uh, Coach, are you going to be in for a late night edition? Of the fifth quarter? Well, you know, at my age, I don't know if I can stay up that late. Now, when I was young, I could stay up till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, five years ago, you could have, but now you're too old. <laughs> we'll uh, see. We'll, we'll have see. A, uh, a late one next week after the game, uh, after ECU takes on South Florida. Coach, uh, we'll get your final thoughts today, 49 to 29. We have uh, we had a ton of calls today, so thanks so much to everybody for listening and calling in. But what's your uh, final words for the day today? Well, just hang in there with the coaching staff. Nobody hates to lose a game worse than, than those guys in that building. And I don't know all the coaches on the staff. I just I know Donnie Kirkpatrick, and I know Steve Shankweiler, and I know they're both great coaches. They've been doing it a long time. Uh, I know Coach Houston personally. Uh, you look at where he's been. He's turned it around everywhere he's been. If we give Coach Houston and his staff time, Two, three years from now, we'll be fighting to keep him here. Uh, he'll get it turned around. We just It's just going to take time. All right. Well, uh, Coach Smith, thanks for joining us. And you add a whole lot to the program. I think you know that from all the people well, that called in. So we appreciate thank it. Thank you. Shirley, awesome work today, as always. The pregame tailgate's a ton of fun. This show's a little different, but we need a win. We need a win, folks, so we can be happy on this show like we are on the pregame. Chandler. We, we need a win so I don't feel so guilty about eating all the Crispitos in the back. Right. Uh, if we don't start winning, I'm going to start drinking some of those before I come on. <laughs> oh, boy. Bye. Coach Smith's going to turn into an alcoholic by halfway through the year. Uh, Chandler, great job today, buddy. And uh, Glenn, thanks to Glenn as well for uh, helping us out with the Zoom. You can watch the interviews there on our social media sites. Thanks also to Parker's Barbecue for the awesome pregame and postgame food. Hook us up with some chicken, shrimp burgers, awesome sides, sweet tea, everything in between. Three locations in Greenwood to serve you Parker's Barbecue. And thanks to all you folks for checking us out today on the U.S. Sailor 5th Quarter Call-In Show. We'll see you next Saturday with another day of coverage here on Pirate Radio. You have been listening to the U.S. Cellular 5th Quarter Postgame Call-In Show. Join us next time for complete postgame coverage of East Carolina football, exclusively on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Say the same things about college football. I don't think they're out of the woods either. And I think it's even harder to tell those kids 
to be